All right, guys, back with our last of our grand theorists, uh, Anthony Giddens, and he is going to talk to us about the juggernaut of modernity. All right, so first of all, juggernaut it means a huge, powerful, overwhelming force. Um, and that's the idea here, is that the modern world is something different than has ever existed in human society before. And as a result of it, um, we're going to be worried all the time. Uh, so, in uh, to just to introduce it, uh, in a way, it's kind of nice that Anthony Giddens is our last theorist because he probably has the most grand of the um, of the approaches to the macro societal level. He's talking about everything when he talks about modernity. He's talking about our economy, the way our economy we engage in our economy. He's talking about government specifically. So this is surveillance and information control by the government. Um, and then militarism, the idea of the power of our military now. Um, he basically what he's saying is all of these things wrapped up together are the way he defines the modern world. I feel like he could probably make room for the critical theorists and their idea of um, of the culture industry as well, but he's Anthony Giddens and he's a really good writer and writes about everything. So he's cool. Um, he gets to say what he wants and he doesn't have to listen to me. Uh, he says that all of this wrapped up together creates huge amounts of risk. So uh, if we think about the way, the, the worries that we could have on any particular day, about what could possibly go wrong. Um, you could very easily start hyperventilating. We don't talk about it very often, but there's enough nuclear weaponry in the world to wipe out humanity many times over right now if somebody makes a mistake. Um, there is the distinct possibility that I could very well lose my job at the end of this semester not because I do a horrible job, but because our economy tanks because of something that doesn't happen in America, at least at its origin, but that happens in the oil industry in the middle of like in the OPEC countries or that happens in some technological sector in Japan. Like uh, my job, the way my little life happens depends on people not blowing me up people not blowing up the economy. Uh, it depends on the idea, or eventually will depend on the idea that uh, we don't heat the country or the world up so much that uh, it becomes an unlivable place for me, or that it becomes unlivable for, for people who live in Florida. And so they all migrate in my direction. And all of a sudden there's food scarcity up here. And you can see where this is going, right? Um, Giddens' argument is that uh, these things create like a web that we are all caught in and that we have no ability to influence in any meaningful way. I can't stop a nuclear attack. I can't stop global warming. I can't stop the economy from tanking. I can't, do, I can't control any of these things and yet any one of these things could kill me. That's not fun. And so this is where this all adds up to risk. Now, Giddens is going to point out four, I think, four particular risks that exist in this situation. Um, risk number one is the people who designed the juggernaut, who designed the modern world or any one of these components, they could have screwed up. I mean, we've already talked about it a couple of times how... Uh, Adam Smith's idea of the wealth of nations hasn't really come to fruition. You've got wrenching poverty in the richest country in the world. So the way these geniuses have set things up, and I don't say like Adam Smith really is a genius. I'm not saying that facetiously or sarcastically. But he wasn't omniscient, right? Like he, he made mistakes. And the fact that we then say, well, let's just go with it because he was a genius. Uh, that's not that's not a firm basis for alleviating my worry based on risk. I could still lose my job, and a whole bunch of people did in 2007, 2008, right? Um, 
So, so first one, the people who designed the juggernaut may have made mistakes, design, design problems. Second of all, the people who administer the juggernaut right now, if we think about this is all adding up to one great big system, the people who are in charge of it right now can screw it up. Um, and that's really what happens in 2007, 2008. It's people who are in charge of the financial system blow it. And here's the problem. People like you and me and your parents end up losing their jobs because of it. It wasn't our fault, but that's exactly what happened. And it's because of his second um, reason uh, for risk is just operator error in administering all of this stuff. Um, we've had close calls on nuclear on nuclear um, war as well. That's been averted only just, and again, because of operator error. Uh, third, we can't always foresee accurately the consequences of modifying the juggernaut. This thing is so complicated that you decide to make one particular change to one thing and the ripple effects, the, uh, the unintended consequences, to use Merton's term, um, you can't always see what those things are. Well, unanticipated, you obviously can't see. But uh, the, it's like we have created a machine that is so elaborate that tinkering with one element of it could have tons of unforeseen consequences later on. Um, and then his fourth one is that uh, people in general and experts in, uh, experts in particular are constantly reflecting, because we're intelligent people, on the juggernaut and creating new knowledge about it. And so the direction that things are going to go from here is completely unpredictable. We don't know what this situation is going to look like. When Anthony Giddens wrote, wrote his book, there isn't an internet, there's not Facebook, and people, no offense to Facebook, but people have died because of Facebook, because of misinformation that was spread on that. So, like, we don't know what changes are going to happen five years from now, and what that's going to mean for our lives. All of this is what leads to him saying is just a pervasive feeling of anxiety. So now we've gone from the macro to that everyday experience that we keep going through this week. In this case, it's our mental health. And what he's saying is we have created a situation where our lives are in the hands of people that we're never going to meet, at least partially in the hands of people that we're never going to meet. And that that is an inherently anxiety-provoking situation to be in. Um, that's it for Giddens. Um, it's not, and it's not super encouraging. I mean, the encourage, the possible encouraging thing, which is something that we've come back to over and over and over again, is the possibility of reason. But you know, that's <laughs> it's not just you being reasonable. It's the people who are in positions of power here. And what we've learned from uh, from the critical theorists, and we've also seen this um, from Habermas, is once you set up a system, and this goes all the way back to Weber, once you set up a system that is rational, that's efficiency-based, it is going to socialize people to have technocratic thinking. They are going to think in terms of, um, in terms of efficiently doing their little piece, and it's hard for reason to get its way in. Okay, that's it for this week. Um, again, the theme this week, despite the fact that we've covered a whole bunch of different types of everyday experiences, the theme is the connection between the macro level and our lived experience. Next week, what we're going to do is we are going to, at least to a degree, funnel ourselves down from that macro level and just deal with the everyday experiences of interacting with people. So it's going to be very, very small scale. All right, that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next week.